I did tell you. Good evening and welcome to the February 3rd meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. No, Please no. stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to um, introduce the board to my immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean, to my far right, Selectman Mike Pluff, to his left, Selectman Mary Louise Woolsey, to my immediate right, Town Manager uh, Fred Welch, um, Dick Nichols, Chairman, and Mike Pierce called me um, about a half hour ago and indicated he would uh, be along shortly but start without him, so that's what we'll do. Um, first item on the agenda is a public hearing under RSA 35-95B to apply for no-cost assistance with planning for coastal flood hazards and climate change impacts under the 2014-2015 Assistance Program for New Hampshire Coastal Zone Communities. This no-cost project will provide in-kind services with a value of over 5000 to the town. I believe uh, Jay Diener, Jay or Jamie, um, why don't you come up and say what you uh, want to say about this uh, program and grant. <coughs> Hello, thank you. Uh, yeah, Jay and I are here about this uh, program that uh, we hope to apply for to uh, get no cost assistance with planning for coastal flood hazards and climate change impacts. Uh, two communities from the region would be selected uh, using a short application uh, which are due on February 14th. Um, we found out about this, uh, discussed the opportunity with the planning board and, and Jay uh, representing the, the Conservation Commission. And uh, there's support from both to apply. Um, what does it involve? Well, if, if we get selected, uh, there's we'd receive assistance from the project team in three main areas. Uh, one would be to develop a local action plan to adjust our to our changing climate and extreme weather events by identifying measures to protect people and infrastructure and manage natural resources. Two, uh, review information to inform local salt marsh rest restoration and protection strategies. Three, gain hands-on experience with a web-based coastal hazards viewer tool uh, specific to New Hampshire. Uh, there will be some participation requirements, but it's not a huge commitment. Uh, we'd have to put together a local working group with reps from the, the town boards and commissions. Uh, we'd attend an in initial meeting between the, the project team and the local working group to discuss the needs and, and goals. Uh, three, we'd host a project kickoff meeting with a presentation by UNH of the local climate assessment identifying priorities for planning and public outreach and to help recruit community members and businesses to attend approximately five <coughs> monthly action planning meetings. And lastly, to participate in one to two mini workshops to test drive and provide input on the web-based coastal viewer interface, which is the tool that uh, we input a lot of data and technical information into and it shows us where we're most vulnerable to coastal flooding and, and extreme weather events. Um, so I, I think it's important that we pursue this to stay in the forefront of what's happening out there uh, in this area. Um, as you know, planning department doesn't have a large budget for technical assistance so we look for uh, for low cost or no cost whenever we can. I think uh, Jay wanted to provide some other information about the application and yep. what we hope to accomplish. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I look at this as an expansion of the efforts of the uh, New Hampshire Coastal Adaptation Workshop Program that we were a part of in 2011 and 2012 in which a variety of different organizations worked with us and the folks in Seabrook and Hampton Falls to do some economic modeling of the impacts of sea level rise and of coastal storm um, activity. Um, in addition to being a member of the Conservation Commission here in Hampton, I'm also a member of the Seabrook Hampton Estuary Alliance and I spoke with members of that group and, and 
we came to the conclusion that it might make sense for the three towns to apply for this assistance as one unit, if you will, one entity, and approach this on a regional basis. I discussed this with Jamie. He agreed. I also spoke with Chris Keeley of the uh, New Hampshire Sea Grant um, program, and they're one of the, the sponsors of this effort, and he also thought it made sense for us to approach this on a regional basis. So I've been in touch with the town managers in Seabrook and in Hampton Falls. They agreed. Mm -hmm. um, they'll provide um, <coughs> a personnel to participate in this program. So, so we'd like to go ahead and approach this and apply for this. Um, as one entity comprised of the three towns we all share, the Seabrook Hampton estuary and, and of course um, the harbor. So it makes sense that we all work together on this effort. Okay, questions or comments from the board? Mary Louise? So you're talking about the estuary, you're talking about looking at the river as well as the ocean. Correct. Because that goes through on yeah. through the Hampton right. Falls and, and yeah. everything. Sure. Um, yeah. Is someday somebody going to step forward and say stop building in the wetlands? Um, well, seriously. Um. <laughs> you know, you, that, well, well, you've been it's, prancing it's a hard and dancing to and studies and what? Well, how hard can it be, Jay? We're building it's, it's the wetlands. We're building all over everything. There's no place for drainage. There's no place for the water to go. And if once this stu this uh, uh, natural cycle progresses and the waters get higher and higher. Uh, the reason I hesitated in answering your, your yeah. question, Mary Louise, is because you've, you've got to strike a balance between property rights and, and what's going to benefit the town as a whole, and, and that's a delicate balance. We're dealing with that now. We've, we've got a warrant article this year to reduce the amount of impervious structure right. in town relative to what you're right. suggesting. That's a, that's mm -hmm. a pretty minor change, yeah. but mm -hmm. even that is, is frankly a difficult position to get everybody on board and mm -hmm. everybody supporting. So I, I think there's going to come a time when structures in our wetlands and wetlands buffer are, are going to be non-sustainable. Right. Um, but I don't think we're at a, that point yet. Um, I don't know exactly when, when we're going to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when we're going to get to the point where we can convince the voters of Hampton that they've got to support that position. Mm -hmm. And without that support, it's just not going to happen. No, yeah, well, they'll just so sit there and get flooded out. Sure. I, I just will I have to... I disagree with you, but... but yeah. You, you can't convince the, boat, the voters in Hampton at this point in time to take that position. I'm just a little gun shy on studies, 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 and I'm a little, you know, I'm a little wary after that center district <coughs> study. I'm a little wary of what's coming out. What's going to come out? A, a final report? What's the end result? An action plan. There'll be an action yeah. plan. There'll be community outreach. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're looking at this, or I'm certainly looking at this in part as being an educational effort to help inform the residents of Hampton of what the impacts of coastal storm activity mm -hmm. is going to be with when you combine it with sea level rise. Is the goal of this to bring this to the planning board and have them draft an article and then we're in another mess, or is this going to be strictly informational, or is this going to going to go to the planning board for some type of action that we're all going to get tangled up in? We're all going to have to come to an agreement on what action comes out of this. Um, and to be honest with you, we would be delighted to have a member of the Board of Selectmen participate in this program so they can be a part of that discussion as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your efforts. So I know you're working. I know you're working hard and I know you're very dedicated. Any and other, I, I'm sorry, I wonder. any yeah. other questions, comments? Um, I have a couple of comments um, related but not um, direct. Um, but my first question, does anybody on the board have any concern over the approach of, of Hampton Falls, Seabrook, and Hampton working together? No. no problem. Okay. Um, just one comment in terms of this appears to be somewhat um, competitive or, or whatever. Yeah. In other words, there, yeah. there was a list of potential towns and two. I recall hearing a statistic back in conjunction with um, our application for FEMA natural hazard mitigation grants that was a statistic. I remember it, but I don't know that I'm remembering it correctly because it was a couple of years ago. And Hampton had um, an unbelievable percentage of the total 
um, flood policies mm -hmm. um, as a percentage Could of the whole lost. state. It was. I, I'm remembering it's 60 percent, but I may very well. Um, <coughs> yep. And this came from from some of the FEMA and the state um, Department of Safety people that were there. I may be remembering the 60 percent. Um, incorrectly, but I remember when the percentage came out, I oh, fell yeah. out of my chair, yeah. you know, with the percentage of, of, yep. of the whole state. So you might want to research that in terms of part of the competing, um, you know, if, mm -hmm. if, if you will. The other thing is just kind of an aside, but it's interesting, is, as she, I'm sure you know, that, that Congress a couple of years ago um, kind of put a sunset on subsidies associated with flood insurance or whatever, but mm -hmm. I understand that this past week the Senate um, passed a bill that would actually extend those subsidies out. H how that um, might bear in the House of Representatives, yeah. I don't know, but it did um, pass the Senate um, this past week, so whatever. Okay, if, if that's basically it, I'd like to go out to the public. If anybody from the public um, wishes to comment on um, this um, grant, whatever. Arthur? One quick thought while Arthur's coming up. Is this five th grant of five thousand per town? If you're pooling the three towns, uh, there's we, well, there's there's no cost involved yeah. with this. <coughs> no, However, this. there is a value attached to it. We don't know what that value is, okay. so we <coughs> want to assume that it's five thousand oh. dollars, and we want to make sure that we're going through the proper procedures to be able to apply for and accept this no away. cost assistance should it come in. Okay. Arthur, <coughs> Art Moody, Three Thompson Road. Welcome. Uh, last I heard about this was at the last Land board <coughs> meeting mm -hmm. in January, yep. where the town planner asked the planning board to sponsor this, and the town council says you got to go to selectman because it may be valued over five thousand, in which under the statute they have to <coughs> have a hearing. Then I. It never came to here <laughs> to a Monday night meeting of the selectmen because the chairman of the planning board was going to come and ask. And then uh, I see the conservation is now involved and it's already on the agenda without a selectman's vote. Uh, and uh, uh, we're involving other towns, the parasite towns, this sponge office all the time. You, you heard the uh, people uh, at your last meeting who are involved with Eaton Park. They're all multi-town <laughs> groups that we base, based here. We don't have enough people for teams in 15,000 population. <coughs> uh, what happens on this is uh, they get a local group, if you get the gr so-called grant, of stakeholders, where have we heard that before, which would probably be people that live on the coast that want seawalls mm -hmm. <coughs> by the taxpayers, and uh, they become a lobbying group, and you'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> I read uh, Seacoast Sunday yesterday, Southern Maine, EPA on the new flood maps. Uh, Floodplain maps are going to increase the height, what the height of the waves are as they come in, mm -hmm. two to three feet over what they were. Yep. And, and for the first time, are going to say that these can go up the river and the estu estuaries in the Hampton Harbor, Seabrook Harbor, at that level for the first time. I know in Massachusetts, uh, Lowell Mass was all of a sudden. Yeah, how come we're involved with coastal? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, to get involved with this, it'll never end. I think there's probably a good chance that uh, one of the two grants in New Hampshire will be down here on the Atlantic. It makes sense. But uh, I'm against, uh, you know, I, sat, I stood in this room where we had someone from Rye and Northampton telling me that we want your sewer, you know. <laughs> Forget it. Thank you, Arthur. Anybody else from the uh, public? Okay, <coughs> seeing none, back to the board. Would somebody like to make a motion to um, approve the application of, of these grants in an amount up to five or over $5,000 um, 
along with um, the joint participation with Seabrook and Hampton Falls? I would make that motion, seeing that nobody jumped <laughs> forward. Would somebody like to second? Seconded by Selectman Bean. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstained? Motion passes 3-1-1 with Bean, Nichols, and Plus in favor. Wolsey opposed. Pierce abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Anybody from the public wish to comment? <laughs> Arthur? Moody Arthur, <laughs> as they say in the military. <laughs> I saw Tom Fortin's changeable copy sign billboard on Route 1 today at his uh, lot, one of his two lots. It's about to be rezoned, maybe. Mm. <coughs> it says, business for sale. Lock, uh, turnkey operation. I guess he's not going to fight it or try to get a protest petition because the planning board threw in this no man's land next to the rezoning of Lafayette Road into three, well, before different zones, two of those zones having the same dimensionals and uses. Four, we got one now. And they put one lot in one and one of his lots in the other. So a protest petition, uh, which would require a two, two-thirds vote to pass that uh, rezoning, uh, probably is out of the question because mm -hmm. it, it just a judge would really throw the book at the planning board for that crap. <coughs> Whoops, I'm using Fred Rice's strong language again. <coughs> uh, the uh, the. Those two rezoning articles, Beach and Route 1, uh, did not conform to the minimum requirements of our ordinance as proposed by the planning board back in the 80s. So are illegal. Second item would be, uh, I thought it would be interesting to tell the uh, income tax forms for the federal government for 2013 are finally arrived at the library, Lane Library, they're this year, they're in back by the reference table. I saw it 1040, 1040A, and 1040EZ, and there were supplement, there were uh, schedules somewhere there, but no, no instruction book list yet. The sequestra delayed everything two weeks. That was to fulfill the fact that all their civilians and the Internal Revenue Service were necessary. So you give us two weeks off, and eight, you only leave us with 82% of our workforce, then we're going to, obviously, we're going to not be able to get the job done on time. <coughs> that was uh, certainly <coughs> done to fulfill that uh, prophecy. As we said in Washington, the workload expands to fill the available personnel. The third item, and last, I'd like to mention the uh, 79E, RSA 79E, Article 19 of the warrant, Town Warrant, mm -hmm. which were to rescind the uh, welfare for developers and out-of-town redevelopers. I come up with a slogan, uh, five years of tax breaks for oceanfront condos, give me a break. Vote yes on Article 19, the town warrant. It's a work in progress. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> Anybody else from the public? Mr. Chairman, may I ask Arthur a question real quick? I, I think we kind of said that public comment isn't interactive, Mike. That's true. Keep okay. That. Um, seeing none, announcements and community calendar. Mike? Oh, I have nothing. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, I don't know if uh, Arthur's... Um, uh, slogan when he calls for give me a break if that's a tax break I think not but um, 
Good work, Arthur. And don't reply, it's not interactive. Um, <laughs> great great uh, town meeting, and uh, kudos to uh, the moderator, Mr. Casasa. Stood his uh, post the entire uh, day, didn't waver, uh, had no relief, and he did a remarkable job. And uh, the uh, town employees did a wonderful job supporting it. And thank you to all the people who come out and share in uh, leadership and democracy in this great town. Thank you, sir. Mike, Bob well said. Mayor Louise? Yeah, it, it was a, a good meeting, but a very disappointing meeting from the point of view of the percentage of, of the population that shows up. Uh, people uh, over in Europe and Asia are dying for the right to have what we have. And I think it's really sad that people can't even give up maybe a morning of their time. That is so critical. That is what you go to vote on when you, it gets to March. And that's your one opportunity to to have a say in what happens. So I am uh, saddened by the turnout. Number two, snowstorm coming Wednesday, possibly a foot or so, and another one forecast for Sunday. Please go online and sign up for email notification so that we don't have carts all over the place when Public Works is not in a collection mode because they're plowing snow. So once again, please, please sign up to get notices from Public Works. With two big storms coming, uh, we really want to have the public informed. I would just add to what Mary Louise said. The, uh, if you go to the home page of the town website, the links to sign up for any of the notification services, email, Facebook, or voice are right on the right side of yeah. the home page. So, okay, appointments. First appointment, Chief Silver, Fire Department, several issues. Chief? Good evening, sir. Good evening, members of the board. I actually have a couple I, uh, items on the agenda this evening. I'll give you an overview of 2013 statistics for fire and EMS, <coughs> and then uh, I want to talk a little bit about some fire prevention, and then we'll talk about those two agenda items. Uh, 2013, we had 16 residential fires, 24 total fires within structures, and an additional 28 fires within vehicles or areas adjacent to buildings. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, slight decrease from 2012. The breakdown by district with the uh, beach district, town district, and then the rural district are those areas of town where there are no hydrants. That would include the area on Route 1 along the marsh or just south of uh, the interchange and those areas that would be west of uh, Route 95. About 46% of our calls occur in the Beach District. Uh, 46, I'm sorry, 53% um, occur within the Town and Rural District. And then uh, a very small percentage, Hampton Town Wide was a section that we had included this year uh, because of a major incident. Total fire incidents are, are <coughs> down from 1,896 in 2012 to 1,859, and those should be really described as uh, fire apparatus responses. Mm -hmm. It's about a 2% decrease, no significant decrease in any particular time of year or in any one particular month. Total, total dollar loss from all fires is up quite a bit. Uh, in 2012, it was about 175000 Current total dollar loss in 2012 is just over $250,000. Uh, false alarm responses in 2013 have increased significantly over 2012 went from 225 to 312 false alarm res uh, responses. False alarms occur for a, a variety of reasons. One thing that we've been seeing a lot of uh, recently, and in particular due to the changes in temperatures, extreme cold, then warming, extreme cold, then warming, sprinkler systems that have not been properly maintained nor been inspected or we haven't received inspection reports, systems freeze because the buildings are not being heated properly. Mm. A lot of vacant buildings in the uh, <coughs> each district. When we get a, a day of warm weather or two days of warm weather, the ice melts and those sections of burst pipe are now permitted to flow water. And we've had a uh, significant increase in the number of those types of calls. Mutual aid received decreased in 2013 from 58 to 43 times. However, our mutual aid responses given remained about the same. Year through December end, we responded to 2011 medical emergencies, only a small decrease of about 23 
uh, medical emergency responses from 2012. We have had 296 occasions of simultaneous calls, just five fewer than in 2012. Those simultaneous calls represent um, occasions during the year where we have two, three, four, or five EMS calls occurring simultaneously. Mm. So 300 out of our 2,000 represents a little less than 20 percent or a little less than a fifth of our responses. <coughs> the replacement ambulance is under construction and <coughs> should be completed within the next 45 days. Due to the delays, we're uh, behind on replacement of ambulances. 2014 is an ambulance replacement year. Uh, I have discussed with Minuteman Truck who we are purchasing the current replacement ambulance from, Road Rescue Ambulance. They have agreed to add a second ambulance to our current order with the only change in cost being an increase from four to $1,500 change in the cost of the chassis for a 2014 chassis, bringing the total to $179,029. We have followed the town's purchasing policy in order to procure the ambulance currently being prepared for delivery. We had bid twice with the same results. I don't expect to see anything change in the next 30 to 60 days. Because of the lengthy process and build time involved, I would strongly recommend that we proceed. And I'll come back and give you some more information to, uh, on that at the end here. Yeah. Fire prevention. Our Fire Prevention Bureau continues to work diligently to fulfill the duties with which they are charged. The Bureau is responsible for many administrative aspects of prevention, including inspections, code enforcement, investigations, complaints, and public education. The Bureau is currently staffed with a <coughs> fire prevention officer and one part-time secretary. The 2014 budget has included funds to fill the fire inspector position. With many projects planned for 2014, it's important for the Bureau to have the necessary personnel to ensure new and renovated properties are constructed to provide the necessary fire protection and safety me uh, measures for our residents and visitors. The following illustrates the duties of the Fire Prevention Bureau. Inspections, fire alarm, sprinkler, hood suppression, and other special suppression reports received annually as required by law, reviewed and logged as inspections. If a system is found to be non-compliant, the owner is notified to submit a plan of action and follow-up is required. These inspections increase each year as new structures are built. So it's not just the inspections that we perform during the construction, but it's the ongoing inspections that are necessary because of the in-place systems. Annually, places of assemblies are inspected and sometimes require reinspection if hazards or compliance issues are identified in the inspection. Upon completion of a project requiring permitting, a witness test, and inspection of each fire protection system is performed, and if issues are detected, may also require a reinspection. Currently, the department does not annually inspect mercantile, business, lodging, multifamily apartments, or condominiums that are not places of assembly. We just don't have the resources to address all of those occupancies. We used to do weekend, I'll call them like night patrols, where we would go out and randomly spot check places of assemblies to make sure restaurants, <coughs> and rental units were not overcrowded, but due to the personnel limitations we have, that has been stopped. There were 17 fireworks displays this past year. <coughs> These must also be inspected before and after each shoot. Other fire officers of the Hampton Fire Rescue were assigned and completed those inspections. There are many special events that involve places of assembly and must be inspected each year, such as the Penguin Plunge, Reach the Beach, the Smutty Nose Rock Fest. You have one on your agenda tonight. The department also inspects each of the cooking vendors' booths and all tents during the annual seafood festival on a daily basis to ensure safety and compliance with fire codes. So each morning before any vendors allowed to open, we're out and we conduct those inspections. Code plan reviews. The fire prevention officer performs a review of plans for compliance with state and local fire codes and ordinances. These include site plans, building plans, sprinkler, fire alarm, suppression systems, LP gas, oil burners, and floor and seating plans. A single building project, such as Smutty Nose, for example, may have five or six sets of plans to review and approve, and two or three may need to be reviewed and approved again if there are changes during the construction phase. This is followed up by having to witness test and inspect each protection system upon completion of the project. There appears to be a trend in Hampton seeing an increase in the amount of large commercial projects, thus driving the need for additional inspection staff. Plan review is a highly technical aspect of the Bureau and is very time-consuming. Permits. 
These include permits for installation of various fire suppression systems, places of assembly, LP tanks, oil burners, blasting, and fireworks. Earlier this year, there was a project conducted to revamp many of these permits. This was done to increase the efficiency in communicating the requirements and outlining the process to the public and contractors. There are many large commercial construction projects this past year as well as many re renovations of exist existing buildings requiring permits. The Bureau works with the Building Department in communicating the status on certain projects and ultimately we sign off to the Building Department once the project is complete in order to the issue the Certificate of Occupancy. There are many instances of contractors starting work before securing permit. Therefore, they're doing work prior to plans being reviewed and approved. Those are the instances where we frequently encounter problems where they're getting work done, not realizing that they're not performing work that meets the intent of the code. Fire investigations requiring the Bureau of Investigation is currently down to only five for 2013. Four were determined to be accidental with minimal fire and smoke damage. One is undetermined and still under investigation. These investigations involve inspecting the property damage over numerous periods of time or numerous days, taking photos, collecting witness statements, and filing reports. We also provide public education, although that has um, been narrowed down because of the minimal staffing that we have. Uh, and where we used to hit all the grades from K through 8, now we're focusing on uh, three or four grades. We utilize a fire prevention trailer. It's been a valuable tool to us. Um, that was purchased entirely with uh, Fire Act grant funding. We still continue to receive compliments on the programs. Educational materials are given to the children, help carry the message of safety to caregivers and other members in the home. Trailer is also shared with some of the surrounding towns to assist in educating children in their communities as well. Condition of the grant was that it be uh, available for regional use. Inquiries and complaints. Inquiries received mostly revolve around smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Complaints include lack of working smoke detectors. With the number of rental units that we have in the town of Hampton, it's just not possible for us to get out and make sure every smoke detector works. Frequently, we receive calls from people that are renting a, a unit saying, my smoke detector doesn't work. And every one of those calls has to be followed up upon. Egress issues, storage of combustible materials, large amount of calls responded to by fire suppression involving false alarms due to faulty sprinkler and fire alarm activations. So every one of those fire alarm activations that turned out to be false, a report gets filed with the fire prevention office and it's their responsibility to follow up. These needs are being addressed in the 2014 fire department operating budget. I urge folks at home to please get out and vote this year. Now that concludes the report of the fire department. Um, Chris, can I um, open it up to questions for the oh, board sure. before we move on to other um, items on your list there? Questions for, for the chief? Mayor Louise? Uh, two quick things, Chief. Would you be kind enough to email that report to Jamie Steffen and tell him that I would like a copy of that for every member of the planning board? Sure. They, I think that is an excellent report. Number two, are we finding people with the false alarms? People who aren't maintaining the premises, so the pipes freeze and whatever. Are we are we finding? We traditionally have not. However, there is a provision in our ordinances mm -hmm. to fine for multiple false alarms. Okay. So if it's the one time and we don't go back again for a month or two months, mm -hmm. we consider the next one mm -hmm. a separate incident. If we go back three times over the course of one week, those are probably occasions where we should be mm -hmm. considering issuing some type of administrative fine. Okay. Thank you. Other uh, questions? Mike? I have a question with the sprinkler systems. Are all sprinkler systems in Hampton all pressurized right to the sprinkler nozzle? Or are they all, uh, wait, uh, wait until a couple of zones go off and then it becomes pressurized? There's a couple of different systems that you can install. And <coughs> they're usually determined by the area of the building mm -hmm. and whether or not those areas can be easily heated or not. Mm -hmm. So there are wet systems, which are the typical sprinkler system where there is water filled in the pipes under pressure all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When a fire occurs, the one head closest to the fire mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. will activate, allowing water flow from that one head immediately. Mm -hmm. The other types of systems are called dry systems. Mm -hmm. 
and it's the same type of piping with a different actuating valve and on one side of the piping there's the water under pressure on the other side there's air in the pipes under pressure uh -huh. so the the air obviously doesn't freeze so in those unheated like an attic space uh -huh. or in an area underneath an overhang where cars may be parked uh -huh. a dry system would be installed fire occurs the sprinkler head will still activate but before water flows the air under pressure is relieved first and then water will begin to flow from that sprinkler head well the reason why I ask is because years and years ago they decided not to put sprinkler systems in computer rooms big computer operations because it would fry the people who were in there if that water started pouring down on all those computers so they decided to go to a gas thing I forget what it's called some gas that would blow out from the floor and it would fill the room full of this marvelous stuff that put out the fire but not kill the people well they found that wasn't so good because the pressure from the gas would literally blow up the tiles off the floor <laughs> and then probably hurt people in the process so they decided well we'll use a combination of where that gas was called and what they called a dry system and they were using the dry system in the large computer installations back when I before <coughs> I retired which would have been in the 90s I just assumed if I had a hotel at the beach where I'm closed in the winter time and it's going to be cold that I would want to invest in a dry system the um, the dry systems you refer to are usually a dry type of an agent and they are very expensive mm -hmm. no, I don't mean that. I mean where well, there's no water in the line um, the properties at the beach use a combination of wet and dry systems I'll just give you an example the fire stations mm -hmm. use combinations of wet and dry systems the attic spaces are required to be sprinkled mm -hmm. and those use a dry pipe system there's no water in the pipe mm -hmm. those areas that we live in are wet sprinkler mm -hmm. systems mm -hmm. problem is that if you don't keep the heat yeah. above the temperature at which the water will freeze mm -hmm. The water in the pipes will freeze. So almost all the motels and hotels at the beach have wet systems then? Primarily wet systems are designed in all living spaces and dry systems are installed in unoccupied mm. spaces. Generally speaking. Yes. Now is there any code requirement that you have now, to the, the other thing you need to understand is uh -huh. just because a dry it's called a dry system <coughs> meaning there's no water in the piping mm -hmm. that air under pressure still needs to be maintained so there are small compressors mm -hmm. to continue to maintain that air pressure okay typically when a wet when a dry system fails it's because the air compressor wasn't maintained mm -hmm. or a loss of power the pressure slowly goes away and then the valve opens and it floods the system with water once those systems are flooded with water it is very difficult to drain all the water. Every bit of water has to be removed that system before it can be res reset. Mm. Okay, that's a good reason to think about it real seriously. Thank you, Chief. Any other uh, questions for the Chief? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. Thank you. Um, I, I, I must have uh, missed the report. If I could get a copy of that report, that would be great. Thank you. Um, your folks, your men, uh, perhaps, uh, well, your, your firefighters picked up my mom again. Uh, this week we appreciate it thank you very much from the Bean family thank you for the great job that you folks did down uh, along with all our departments at the uh, Penguin Plunge yeah. excellent excellent work it's not easy and it is uh, actually uh, potentially a dangerous situation and you folks I went down there and watched it uh, have that nailed right down so great job and uh, how are the uh, how are the new uh, quarters for the men <laughs> I think it would probably be a good question to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that uh, I'm quite comfortable. I think they're working out very well. I think everyone is adjusted well. Um, I think they've put uh, an extraordinary effort into filling in the gaps between the contractors leaving and mm -hmm. us turning it into, you know, really a home by hanging pictures on the walls by painting some of the spaces that we didn't get to to finish um, <coughs> constructing racks for equipment and just making sure everything was stowed properly so I have to say uh, you know they've really done an exemplary job making sure that the fire stations are complete and they're functional wonderful thank wonderful. you yeah. and uh, one, one last is more of a statement than a question I, I do uh, hope that the voters uh, will support that additional uh, position 
that uh, you have brought forward that we've talked about. There is a tremendous amount of building. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of challenge to just one inspector. It can't be done, and uh, I do hope that the voters come through with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Other uh, questions for the Chief? Um, I just have one, uh, Chris. When um, Mike issued the uh, December, at least current version of the December year-end financial report, I had made a, a note that the um, EMS revenues were down by about 46,000 or 8 percent, but Mike indicated they were at, this was actually just 11 months worth the revenues. So it, it sounds to me from the statistics you throw out, we're looking at about a flat revenue situation once you post the final month's revenues. Is that yes. pretty much I, it? I actually have that report. I was okay. going to offer that comment, that, that this balance does not include the December right. balance. However, all invoices uh, were billed through December 31st. Good. So uh, Comstar bills on our behalf. They like to close out the year usually by the second week, no latest, in January. And um, by about the end of the first week, we had everything prepared, and they had billed everything. We just don't see that. The revenue lags a little bit. Do, do you know what the final revenue number is? At I, this I don't. Okay. I don't. Okay. Okay. That's I think Mike would probably see it before I would. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um, you want to move on to the next item in order, the ambulance yes. replacement? So, uh, as I started to discuss a little bit, um, and I want to just kind of give you a quick rundown. I was looking at the fund balance report for 2013, and we have a reported net fund balance of $483,241.15. Does not include the December invoices. That revenue will, will yet be added to that. Um, what you also don't see there is the current purchase order for the ambulance that is under yeah. construction. Yeah. That ambulance PO is in the amount of $177,529. So the current balance is greater than $305,712 at the end of what the year. What was that again, uh, Chris? Uh, the PO or the current balance? The current balance. Current balance is greater than $305,712.15. So that's the net of 483 plus, say, mm -hmm. I'm going to pick a number 46. Um, for December, whether didn't it add, I didn't factor that in yet because I don't know what that number is. Okay, so it's that's the 483 minus the uh, p outstanding oh, purchase okay. order. So actually, it's it's 305, 712 plus, plus whatever December. comes in in December. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Correct. Yeah. Our current ambulances are a 2004, a 2006, and a 2009 model year ambulance. Our goal all along has been to allow an ambulance to remain in service for a period of six years yep. and replace one. So with three ambulances, every two years is an ambulance replacement year. 2010, 2012, 2014 are all ambulance replacement years. We ordered in 2009. That's why the model year 2009, we took delivery in 2010. We did not replace in 2012 because of the issues we had with the bidding process and the vendors that had submitted bids, two of them ultimately withdrew and it forced me into a position where I was back to, uh, back to bidding. 2014 is a replacement year. Mm -hmm. Considering that one of the vehicles is 10 years old, and I can tell you on at least a half a dozen occasions last year, ambulances broke down while transporting patients to the hospital. Not a situation I ever want to have our members experience again. Um, my recommendation is, considering the efforts we've gone through with the bidding, the fact that the current bidder will allow us to purchase essentially at the same cost as the bid, adding to the current order, would be to authorize a purchase in 2014 using the last bid, only adjusted by the $1,500 mm -hmm. for the change in the chassis. Mm -hmm. <coughs> also moved. <coughs> Somebody want to second that? Second. Um, I just have a couple of questions, and I think I may be asking questions that you were, I, I just was processing while you were talking. But basically, we've got a 2004, 2006, and a 2009 currently. You have one on order, so we're essentially going to just based on what's already in process, have a 2014 and presumably the 2004 is mm -hmm. going to go away. So based on what's already happening, we've got a, a 2000, 
on the near horizon we'll have a 2006, 2009, and a 2014. Thir 13, Jess. And, and before we, we fell behind, we were repl replacing one of them approximately every, every how many years? years? Two. two. Every two? Years. Yes. Two, we just said. Two. Okay, so every two years or whatever. So if what you're basically suggesting is then we would have actually, we would actually be replacing two in 2014? Only because the one that is under construction now was the one that should have mm -hmm. oh, no, I, I purchased understand. in 12. Right. Yeah. So what I'm asking is, this is a 2013 model year ambulance will take delivery within the next 45 days. Yeah. Let's put in the order right. for a 2014, which will take delivery in the latter right. half of right. 2014. Right. I understand that. It appears, you know, in terms of fund balance, <coughs> from everything you just said, I, I just used a, a number of 46,000 to add to your 305,000. So you've got... I, I'm anticipating a $350,000 number. Could be 340, could be 360, whatever. You would be taking out of that if this second purchase went ahead, 179. So it appears that right. there's adequate, you know, more than adequate money in the fund balance to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now you would end up with a situation <coughs> with a 2000. Presumably the 2006 goes away mm -hmm. when that second one shows up. Right. So you'd end up with a, a 2009. And I'm going to call it, whether it's the right model year or not, a 2014 and a 2014. Um, in theory, just kind of follow it forward for me then. At what point would the 2009 be replaced? 2016. Okay. So now in 2016, we replace another one. Going forward from that, the fact that you've got two ambulances that came on at the same time, how does that affect the plan beyond 16? This exact same situation happened um, <coughs> somewhere between the 2004 mm -hmm. and 2006 replacements, and we actually skipped one year. Mm -hmm. So we right. delayed one year, and that one time went to a three-year, and then put everything back on a two-year replacement. Yeah. Okay, so you'd have, and I, I don't need to know all the details, and you may not have even worked them out, but you would probably manage the utilization because it's probably mileage that plays as much a role as age does and, and whatever. Yeah. It's such that by the time you get to the next step beyond mm -hmm. the the replacement of 2009, it would be, you would have managed things such that it would be clear which one of those 2014 was replaced or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. Um, and basically what you're suggesting um, is that we're compliant with the purchasing policy based on the bidding that already yeah. took place, um, went to the um, low bidder. I don't have any reason to challenge that, and I even have a foggy recollection of a time frame yeah. in the purchasing policy that says if, if something was bid within six months and it's within yeah. so much of, yeah. you know, um, that amount. I think we I, I think we should check that just to confirm it yeah. um, because y we're not even asking for a waiver. But I, I don't think that that's um, I, I tend to agree with you. I guess is what I'm saying. So um, given that the selectmen have to approve um, everything over fifty thousand dollars, then does somebody and you've already got approval on on the first one, the one that's in process. Does somebody want to make a motion to approve the purchase? I have a motion on the table. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. You do. Plus second. And second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Great. Okay, Thank Chris. You. And Last the item final item is yep. de declaring as surplus a 2004 Polaris Ranger. The 2004 Polaris Ranger was purchased with State Homeland Security grant funds, 100% uh, funded by State Homeland. State Homeland Security grant funds uh, as part of uh, 2013 purchases. A, a PO was executed for a replacement. I would like to utilize the old unit as a trade-in. Uh, the three, we w already went through the whole process of securing uh, quotes. All Basically, all three of them had offered the same. Um, we've already executed a PO to Plastow Power Sports for the purchase of the replacement. Mm -hmm. It's just more of a formality requiring that it be declared as surplus so that I can comply with the conditions of the grant. So moved. We have a second? Oh, I'll second for conversation, but I definitely have a question. Okay, seconded by Selectman Pierce, motion by Selectman Woolsey. Mike, you have 
Well, so this, by <coughs> be declaring it surplus, will get around all the federal and state rigmarole yes. of being able to dispose of it in a proper manner. That's correct. Okay. Correct. When we dispose of property that was purchased with, with federal grant mm -hmm. funds, yeah. we can't dispose of it in a way that would generate a revenue for the town. So using it as a trade-in mm -hmm. shows that we're using whatever value it has remaining, mm -hmm. and we're putting that value towards another piece of equipment that will be used in the same manner. Right. Well, that should Good. make them happy. Yeah. Any, other, uh, any other discussion? Well, All in favor? Unanimous. Great. Okay. That before, the, before the chief leaves, may I bring up one thing uh, that I have been thinking about? In your budget, it shows a line for overtime, and this may be relevant for the police department as well, but uh, I think it's probably time to differentiate between overtime overtime and replacement overtime, replacement uh, uh, payments, shall we say. For example, if somebody's on vacation, oh. uh, that's not overtime. You have to replace that body. And I think it would give us a little better picture of the, the replacements that you're required to fund as opposed to if you have to call people in for literally for overtime. So I'm wondering if you would consider and if the board would give a little consideration to putting an extra line uh, in the chief's budget if to I give could. us a little truer cost. I might, might yep. be able to answer that question for you. Okay. There are actually four lines in the budget. Seven lines. Well, there are, but the ones the that I segments. think the ones that yeah. that uh, Miss Woolsey is referring to. One is called overtime. Right. One is called vacation. One is called sick, and one is called callback. Okay. So the first three, overtime, vacation, and sick, are almost entirely replacement cost okay. lines. Okay. The only one that is truly an overtime would be the callback. That's in excess of when we have an emergency that requires. The, the return of off-duty personnel. Okay. So as we fill shifts throughout the year, because we don't fill 100% of all vacancies, mm -hmm. I determine which shifts are going to be filled. Mm -hmm. And let's say in, in this particular work week, there were 100 hours of vacation leave, and there were 24 hours of sick leave. Mm -hmm. There was no callback. Let's just forget mm -hmm. about that for a minute. And there were some training activities where members were on duty and had to be relieved mm -hmm. to go to training. Over the course of the year, only about 70% of vacation leave gets filled, yeah. so not 100%. Right. Sick leave, and I, I have the exact numbers. I've right. been tracking it for the last couple of years. Do. Yeah. About 60% of sick leave gets filled. Okay. On the overtime, it varies because there are a lot of reasons for overtime. Right. Some of it could be contractual. Some of it could be training. Some of it could be bereavement leave. Right. You know, training. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, attendance at certain meetings that are required to be paid. So, I think we're already doing what exactly you're asking. Are. But perhaps then to make it clear, because the budget committee is going over this, and people who aren't intimately familiar with what's happening. Maybe put a little parenthetical on the line saying, you know, replacement mm -hmm. cost S to differentiate those lines from the actual overtime. Mm -hmm. It's just a thought. I mean, you can certainly <coughs> change the description, I guess, but I, I agree with the Chief. We're, we're doing that. Um, in addition to those four lines that he described, again, Overtime wages, overtime callbacks, sick leave wages, vacation wages, far and away the biggest yeah, but one. Sick leave wages, you know, should be differentiated as a re far and away the biggest. Far, far and away the biggest one during 2014 was the vacation wages at, mm -hmm. at 184,000. Right. None of the others, mm -hmm. and then just to add mm -hmm. one other one, um, overtime callback in the EMS fund um, was 99,000 dollars. So that's mm -hmm. I assume. Chris driven by an ambulance goes on a run to Portsmouth or Exeter, so you call back another yeah. two guys in mm -hmm. to have coverage or whatever. I, th I think we already got. It, but I think the little parenthetical maybe I don't know if it's appropriate on the line, but just saying you know replacement vis-a-vis -vis calling people in. 
however you call why, it. Why don't you take? Why don't you take a copy of the financial report and and mm -hmm. send an email to Chris as to what you think would be appropriate and let well, him Chief knows where let his, him respond to where that. his replacement costs are and where I have a good I, time I have a good idea of something that could okay. help people understand as they Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Chris. You're welcome. Have a good night. Okay, next appointment, Doug Kosterman, Procon, permission for the installation of Jersey barriers and the blocking of the sidewalk on Highland Ave for work at the Ashworth Hotel. Assume you're Doug. No, you're Doug. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. John is actually the owner of the hotel. Okay, I should have known that. I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> So what we're planning to do this spring is do some um, facade upgrades to the Ashworth Hotel. Good. Standing a little close so you guys can all see it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not finalized the design yet, but we're definitely going to be replacing the uh, vinyl siding with an upgraded uh, PVC. PVC siding. Good. Um, we're going to be repointing the brick and ceiling. Excellent. Uh, renovating the sign. Beautiful. We're going to be replacing all of the balconies. Uh, they're right now they're metal rail balconies. We're going to turn them into glass balconies. Oh, very similar to the other tower. If you've seen it in Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be re uh, replacing all of the uh, exterior lighting mm -hmm. and adding these nice windows along Highland Ave wow. into our ballroom, um, as well as upgrading the grill into the uh, uh, below mm -hmm. grade park. Yeah. As part of that, um, we're also going to be sealing the concrete decks, and it requires a temperature of 50 degrees, though? 60 degrees, we're trying to maintain mm -hmm. um, against the facade to keep that temperature so it will cure properly. Yep. Um, obviously, we're trying to do as much as we can during this time of year while there's really no one at the beach and try to be complete before Memorial Day so we can um, let... Uh, the Ashworth be full, <laughs> blown open. <laughs> right. Um, so what what we would be doing during that process is uh, scaffolding along the side of the building yeah. and, and closing the facade with a, um, a, a non-breathable fabric. Um, and in order to do that, because we're very limited along Highland Avenue, mm -hmm. we'd like to request that we close the section of this sidewalk and build a temporary crosswalk um, right in front of uh, 105, I think it's 105 Highland, which we uh, actually own as part of the hotel, and then redirecting <coughs> pedestrians uh, down the other side of Highland uh, Ave, and, um, and then they can cross the street again at Ocean Boulevard. Yeah. There is sidewalk on both sides, yeah. so we took that into account. Um, we're doing these in phases. We'll be doing the front elevation, which is the Ocean uh, Boulevard side first, which will have uh, access for pedestrians to walk beneath it, and then we'll have Jersey barriers on the front. So if someone okay. decided to slide off of their car, or they would hit the Jersey barriers, not the stage <laughs> with people working. Correct. Unfortunately, on Highland Ave, um, due to the, the, the width of the sidewalk, we don't have the room to get that pedestrian walkway underneath. So that's why we're trying to put people onto the other side. And at the same time, we do need to protect it, but due to the width of the sidewalk, we're asking if we can put Jersey bearers very tight up against the curb down Highland Ave that will take up about 18 inches um, of the the, uh, the roadway. Mm -hmm. Every time we work in that roadway, roadway we will be getting a, a, a police detail as well. Uh, questions? No, I, I just have a comment. I think it's wonderful to see the businesses refurbishing down there. That looks beautiful. It looks like it will really look good. Uh, I have no problem with it. What time frame are you talking about the temperature um, before Memorial Day? We're trying to get this whole 
complete job, all four sides of the tower mm -hmm. before Memorial Day. That is our goal. Excellent. So I would just say try not to run into the right. the summer crowds. I think if we I did go too far past, we, last year we did the other side, yeah. and we stopped. We just we couldn't do it. It just yeah. didn't and make sense. we finished sense. up in the fall. Right. But an excellent project. I think that's very impressive. Thank you. Other, uh, any questions? Um, I've just got a couple. Um, you were basically the um, memo that we got from Doug indicates um, February 3rd to March 4th on Highland, <coughs> um, I'm sorry, on Ocean Boulevard, and then uh, Highland to follow March 3rd to April 8th. Um, what is the decking and how did it, in between, you know, between this memo, how did it get out to Memorial Day from April that 8th? There's four, f four sides of the building, so once we get done, the idea was to get the parts where people walk by mm -hmm. or in the way, cars yeah. are there, get them out of the way yeah. early on in the season, yeah. and then work on the pool side, which will be completely off the road, and then the back parking lot. So okay. there's the four. It's about a month per elevation. So, so the Jersey bar barrier aspect of it is, is done on April 8th then? Correct. Okay. Right. I, I or shortly it. thereafter. Uh, yeah. yeah, depending, and, and depending on, on how quickly <laughs> we can get the project going, right. the snow, yeah. Like any project, you know, there's delays, but we're looking, I think mm -hmm. we'd be able to beat some of these dates, too. That's right. my goal. Beautiful and job. And um, obviously, you'll be working with the police department in terms yeah. of, you know, when details are required and all that. Correct. Fred, any input on it? or? No, just have to work with the state on um, anything out on Ocean Boulevard. That's I right. spoke with Doug um, Deporter. Deporter today, yeah. actually. I kind of got passed around to a bunch of different people. And he saw the same plan. I went over the whole... Uh, yeah aspect of how we're doing it and he at this point had no no issues and if it, he did he would get back to us right. yeah. really beautifying the beach area. Great. and the other aspect of this is that we'll have all kinds of signage for people to see lights even where the barriers are so there's no issues of plows hitting it or cars or yeah. what have you beautiful yeah. well, one, okay. um, one comment I'll ask if you don't mind um, this, the sidewalk on Ocean Boulevard is much wider, I assume, in front of this building. Yes, it is. So you don't have the, near the problem you do on Highland. No, we don't. And actually, we're not doing as much work at the street level either. So we can, uh, at that point, open it up <coughs> so that people can walk underneath the uh, scaffolding. So you need barriers along there, too? We do, just to protect the scaffolding. And, you know, if, if a car runs into the side of the scaffolding, yeah. we have a big, big problem. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Okay. And you're going to have then the barriers <coughs> and then some scaffolding and then the people walk under the scaffolding? Correct. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, I would make a motion to approve the use of the sidewalks and the streets for Jersey, the Jersey barriers with the time frames and the description described in the January 27th um, email from uh, Doug Costner. <coughs> All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Very Thank much. you very much for your time. Okay. <coughs> Fred, town manager's report. You want these back? Uh, you, you're you're welcome to keep them. Keep them. Oh, second for you if you'd uh, like. Okay. Show them to your neighbors. Show <laughs> them to my neighbors, yeah. <coughs> Thank you again. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, work continues on the Church Street pump station. The metal roof and soffits are completed. The HVAC, except for the electric room, is completed. The interior pours of concrete uh, moving forward as planned. Primary wiring uh, from the street has been back pulled into the structure. So, <coughs> excuse me, we're moving along quite quickly here. Uh, more work will be completed this week. Uh, placed on this week's agenda is a request to formally approve a number of stop signs that currently exist on various streets within the community but are not listed within the current ordinance. The DPW has prepared <coughs> an inventory of all signs in the town that dis disclose a shortcoming uh, that mm -hmm. we, we would request that the selectmen approve the inclusion of those uh, stop signs of the code. Uh, in reviewing the sign inventory, it was brought to light that there are a number of illegal speed limit signs within the community that are being moved, removed and replaced with legal, legal signs. Uh, by state law, the lowest speed limit that can be posted is 25 miles per hour. The signs being removed are posted from 5 to 20 miles an hour. There's nothing like five. public creation. Actually, there are four or five mile an hour signs. But <laughs> how they got there, we don't know. But That was back when you had your horse and buggy, right? Uh, I suspect that, uh, yeah, uh, as I recall, there was a story of uh, uh, 
U.S. Uh, Grant, who who received a uh, traffic ticket for for speeding with his horse <laughs> in D.C. So uh, that may have been the situation here at five miles an hour. So, um, I had requested the building inspector and the DPW uh, director to examine the old barrel shop at the community gardens yeah. to determine if a demolition permit should be issued. And I did have a chance to sit down and talk with the building inspector today about it. Mm -hmm. He says the building is in good sound condition. There's no need to worry about the building toppling or falling in or going into gross disrepair. It is securely locked. Uh, the windows are securely uh, shuttered. Uh -huh. And uh, there appears to be no problem with the foundation, which is steel stone. Uh, so he's he's saying there's nothing <coughs> that should be done with the building currently, but he, they'll they'll keep an eye on it, um, and if something needs to be done, they'll try to bring that to our attention so that we can take whatever action is necessary to preserve the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of other things, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, last week I brought up the the point about the uh, the, the garage at Tuck Field, the recreation department, and. Uh, the bid that was awarded to Tier 1 construction. Um, we've been reviewing that. They came in with a 4000 almost a $5,000 change order before doing any work whatsoever. Um, what was the bid like 48000 Yes, it was. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Um, in fairness to not just them, but also the other bidders, uh, we haven't even started work here yet. Uh, we'd like to avoid the bid mm -hmm. uh, and go back out to rebid. Yeah. Uh, so everybody has a level playing field yeah. to go from. Uh, they apparently have found a problem, which means to me they <coughs> didn't examine the site well enough when they did. <coughs> if that's the case, then everybody should be brought back in with a mandatory visit to the site. Yeah. The building inspector present and other people <coughs> present, including Good. our public works engineer. So there's no question about what we're getting, and we'll do the bid correctly, get it done, get the proper records and boards information sent to the board. So that you can you can see exactly what needs to be done. Good. So you want, you want to vote on that? So I, th I, th I think that that um, you know certainly based on what you've said makes sense. The question for you: Had you proceeded with the plan, what was your anticipated time frames to start and complete construction? We were anticipating that we would be done before uh, Memorial Day. Okay, and and rebidding it, how does that affect your schedule? Is there an issue of working during the summer in this particular environment and so on and so it'll, forth? It will probably go into mid-June or so. Okay, so it's not a problem. It's it's not like working at the beach in the summer where you no. defer it to the fall or anything yeah, like that. We are out of the way, <coughs> yep. so, we're, so yep. it's, it's a pretty good area to work in during the summer. To, if we to had Mary to. Louise's point, do you feel you need a motion on this? Do you or? want a consensus? I, I think legally the board has to move to vacate the bid okay, because we did move. award it. Okay, uh, moved by Mary Louise, seconded by Sletman Pierce. Any further discussion? To vacate that bid. Yep, all in favor? Unanimous, okay? Good. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, as you know, um, you had requested that uh, uh, we take a look at uh, the west side of Ocean Boulevard, and I have a, a, a small, gigantic pile of material <laughs> here on there. Uh, and we're going to, I'm suggesting to you, as long as it's okay with the board, that I'm going to schedule a public hearing for the parking on the west side of Ocean Boulevard from High Street to Church Street uh, for February 24th. Sounds good. Uh, I asked Fred to schedule that yeah. at a time frame that gave. I asked Fred for yeah. some combination <coughs> of him and Jamie. Um, yeah. Jamie, I think, would need to be here. Yes, some he works would. with Jamie's yeah, schedule. Yeah. Give them enough time to just give a yeah. presentation so the public understands what the issues are and so on. So yeah, that we, sounds good to me. Okay, good. Then we'll, we'll, we'll schedule accordingly. Uh, on uh, House uh, Senate Bill 219, which is the, uh, the bill that was approved uh, that the board authorized us to submit for cemetery funds, sale of cemetery lots, oh. and the oh, fund yeah. to go directly to the trustees yeah. if town meeting should accept it. Um, Senator Stiles did uh, work that through committee, and it was approved by the Senate on uh, January 30th, 2014. Ought to pass with amendment. It did. Uh, it's gone over to the House of Representatives, and hopefully it'll receive expeditious treatment Good. over there. Good. So, um, who with knows? With some of our other bills, like pollution <laughs> control exemptions, <laughs> yeah. that way. Yeah, right. we, could, we could use that kind of push, there's no question. Um, I did talk to uh, Mr. Summers, uh, talking about the second local access channel activation for the mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Uh, as you perhaps know, we've been having a little trouble getting the cable run. 
And oh, uh, Jay Summers from Comcast. Yes. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And Jay and I did talk, and I had him talk with uh, Paul uh, from IT, okay. and uh, we seem to be on the road. Everything seems to be moving at this point, so we'll uh, knock on wood uh, <laughs> that things are going to be expedited here, so that we can get this thing done just as quickly as possible. Th this that might happen this year. This was essentially the $15,000 project that we approved in mid-November. Actually, this <coughs> deals with the seventy, the $67,000 project of running the, the, the cable from. Well, part of that is uh, part of that whole thing. It's 15,000 that we approved, um, but it runs a second cable from the head end here to the head end there, so that we tie the two head ends. But again, together. All, all we've mm -hmm. approved is 15,000. 15, 15, I don't believe right. it was anticipated right. to cost any more than that. And I don't think it's even going to cost that. Right. Okay. So that's 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 <coughs> in the works, and and uh, I've talked to uh, Jay, and uh, they seem to be. Uh, Moving along. Thank uh, goodness. Yeah. Wait and see. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use our best method to uh, figure out what's going on. They have no problem with rate increases, but they have problems doing that stuff. Yeah, we have a lot of things. I've given you tonight a copy of the short Good traffic control study oh, yeah. for the, uh, uh, the center of town. Oh, goodness. Uh, yes, I agree. It's an oh, goodness sort of situation. Um, we, we, we have, we, it's completed. Um, and I think the comments that were made by Mrs. Woolsey and Mr. Rice are incorporated within the plan. And um, the chief is going to come in at your next meeting and go through it, get your blessing for the recommendation, and move forward to get this done as quickly as possible. So uh, I, I thought we done. said at least a half a dozen <coughs> times that there was going to be some sort of on site interaction between yeah, Mary yeah, Louise and, yeah, and Fred Rice yeah, and the individual. Yeah. I, and I and I I don't know if that's happened. Okay. Well, right. why don't we make that happen? All we need is okay, but, a but left hand turn arrow southbound. You you and Fred and are a right hand arrow on northbound on Route One. Get it over with. Okay. Th this is this it. is the God, the, the is I'm going to say it's the seventh time. I made up the number six or whatever <laughs> that was a guess. Um, <laughs> we've got a couple of people who are. Not traffic engineers, but knowledgeable of uh, the local issues Not there and whatever. Day. Can we get the individual down to meet with them? Well, if they're going to put the confounded turn arrows, uh, then it, it will solve the problem. I'm just tired of thinking about it. Do it. Uh, I, I'm bothered that we asked a half a dozen times for that to happen. Yeah, and it didn't happen. It I'd like to see yeah. it happen. Okay. I will direct the chief to make I, I, I understand traffic engineers probably don't necessarily want to meet with, you know, local people who aren't experts or whatever, but I, I think it's a good thing to do. I'll stand myself. out in the middle of Route 1 at the intersection and direct the traffic if they don't get their tailbones okay. going. Okay. Anything else, Fred? Uh, yes, sir. There are a couple of other things. I have not heard back from the meeting of the Seabrook Selectman today at 10 o'clock. Okay. I'm anticipating oh. because they're getting ready for their deliberative session oh, that yeah. we will yep. hear shortly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, I have referred to um, the Park and Recreation Department a communication from UNITEL. Uh, they are providing $2 million worth of um, funding for energy efficiency controls and, and new lighting systems. Uh, and I've referred that to them so they can apply for the new lighting systems at, uh, at the park that they're <coughs> they have the warrant oh, for the meeting. Yeah, uh, hopefully that will work. Um, I can tell you the $500,000 grant for the, um, the dam and the culvert and meadow pond, and this, this is it, uh, <laughs> was submitted on time by the Department of Public Works. Good. You have tonight a copy of all of the changes by article. Yep. Yep. Uh, for your reference in your, in, your, in your material that I brought down to today. So you have that. Hopefully it, uh, it gives you a That's good picture. document here. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Gives you a good picture of actually what was done at the meeting. Beautiful. Okay. Any questions for Fred? I have just one quick request that I made of Fred before the meeting, but I'll say it to you as well. I, I asked him for four make way for ducks signs for the... <coughs> well, people are complaining that, that the ducks are getting killed at the uh, pond, it's Coffin Pond, but it's called Bachelor's Pond on Toll Farm Road, and the other pond is... Well, you it's it's actually yeah. over the river. Yeah, it's yeah. over the Taylor yeah. River. Yeah, because the poor little ducks are getting killed. Hurry increase. I, sh I should bring up Mr. Chairman before we go any further. There was, I did receive a telephone call from uh, Aquarian 
Uh, they are filing on April 1st for a water rate increase. It won't go into effect. Oh, it's good. Um, good. The, the increase is being postponed uh, because of federal tax credits. So the one point, I think it's 1.9 percent, could be wrong, but I think it's 1.9, uh, will not go into effect uh, until January. And in January, it will be postponed again because of another federal tax January credit. of? This coming year. 15. 15. 15. Okay. Yeah. And it will not go into effect then because of additional federal tax credits. So yeah. basically, this wicker charge, will, you won't see it. And the rates will go down. Okay. Any yes. other questions for Fred? Um, I have one. It, 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 it's not in any way the issues. Why does so much of your weekly report, particularly this week, not covered in your weekly report on the agenda? I mean, that's the. The agenda is what, you know, obviously there's some important stuff in there. And I understand some stuff's yep. going to come in Friday afternoon or mm -hmm. during the day Monday. Mm -hmm. But the, that is what basically warns the public and gives people an opportunity to comment, a public comment. And these are all <coughs> things, some of which we're even taking votes on. Um, you know, I, I just think that they should be covered in the the written report that's part of the agenda, if possible. And I'm not saying it's perfect or whatever, but literally... 50% of what's covered here wasn't on the agenda. And I didn't have it till late Thursday evening or, or sometime during the day on Friday and the report had already been done. Mm -hmm. It seems to be a habit uh, of people postponing until the last moment giving us information. Yeah. I try to give it to you. In some cases, it's a situation of I want to give you the information and then schedule it for another meeting. Uh, but I'm not getting this stuff until late. Yeah. Some of it I got, in fact, a couple of things I got today. Yeah. Well, I, I guess <coughs> for those things that are, you know, showing up Friday afternoon and, and Monday, I understand it. But I would just like to request, particularly being sensitive to things that involve, that we know are sensitive to the public, mm -hmm. people may want to input on things that require a, a, a vote um, of the board or whatever. There's There's nothing that, I mean, at the very least, if there was a particularly important item that would prevent us from putting an updated agenda, in particular on the website, which probably has the widest um, viewing. Uh, if you don't mind my doing that, then I'll be happy to update the agenda. That's, right. That's not a problem. Right. I, didn't, I haven't received permission to do that, so I haven't done it. Right. Well, <laughs> I, I think certainly in terms of updating the agenda, for items that are part of your report, particularly if there's an item that you feel, oh, the public would want to know about oh, that, sure. I, I, I think would, we should do that. I would think, Mr. Chairman, that I would prefer postponing it a week before we update the agenda at the last minute. Okay. Pen depends on the item, Mike. If it's something that needs attention right it's away. It's an emergency. But, but what, right. what, what's occurring here, though, Mike, you say putting off a week or whatever, mm -hmm. is we're, we're covering these things and it's not even on an update agenda. Better for it to be on a, an agenda that goes out Friday at 4 or Monday at, at, at 10 than to not be on anything that's on an agenda and end right. up being covered by us. Right. So. I agree with that part, Mr. Okay. 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 Any old business? I'll just mention one item. I don't know. I received uh, an email from Tracy Emmerich as the CIP committee chairman. I don't know if the entire board got it, um, so I'll read it. Essentially, um, the planning board at its meeting of January 15th voted to accept the 2014 to 2019 capital improvements plan. Um, and just for the benefit of, of, of the public, that plan includes town departments, SEU 90, and Hampton's 41 percent share of, of Winnicott High School. So. And I will say what I said last week, that they persist in setting a base of $75,000, which is absolutely ridiculous. They should be focusing on bond issues, and a lot of the stuff that's in that report has already been accommodated in the budget <coughs> and, and Warren articles. So. And I, I would just add to that that the CIP committee has, has voted to again continue yeah. with the 75000 threshold, anything $75,000 or yeah. more. Mary Louise has made that point a number of times, yeah. and um, Mary Louise is the only one that I recall that has a problem with the $75,000 um, threshold. Well, so somebody ought to have a problem with it. When you're talking about a $26 million budget, it's rather silly. Okay, let's, we, that's been debated. The place to do that is CIP committee, but I just need to point yeah. out that what you consider as unreasonable is, and silly, you were the only yeah. one. So, okay. 
New Business, 2014 Deliberative Session. I believe the primary reason for putting this um, on the agenda is that for items that were changed at the Deliberative Session, if mm -hmm. one of the selectmen wishes, <coughs> we have an opportunity if we want to change um, our recommendation on any of those. So um, I, I did um, share emails with the town attorney. Fred was copied on it today in terms of yep. the scope yep. of those that we might change, and it's pretty much it is you know limited to those that where something changed mm -hmm. um, in the Warren article. Is there anybody interested um, in, in proposing that we change our recommendations on any of the Warren's articles which changed? And I believe. This would be our reference point. Yes, sir. Um, right here. Or it needs to be printed. Well, the only one, and the first one that comes to mind, Mr. Chairman, would be Article 8, which changes the total of the budget, which I'm not, don't have a big problem with that. It's just that we, if that's in the operating budget, they remove the money for the, uh, uh, what do they <coughs> call it, the municipal? NHMA. Uh, NHMA. Uh, say it again. NHMA, NHMA New Thank Hampshire you. Municipal <laughs> Association. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, uh, removing that from the budget, I think, is cutting off your nose to spite your face. And I'm really disappointed <coughs> that uh, Mr. Lang got up and promoted that, and I'm really, uh, really concerned that he seemed like he had some kind of plan or it was preset to do that when he got there. And I, I, I don't know if any of us had anything to do with it or not, but that is just not a good thing. And I think that the budget, whether we vote to change our recommendation or not, has no effect on that whatsoever. And if we not, even if we do uh, decide to even not recommend the budget, it's still going to go forward with that flaw. And I think that's unexcusable. Okay. And for somebody to get up at the uh, uh, <clears throat> at the deliberation session and make some kind of a mistake of that magnitude, <coughs> taking away from our <coughs> people that we rely on and conquered for legal advice and so forth to deal with the legislature and the Senate and all that sort of thing, was just foolhardy. I know Mr. Lang thinks they're all part of the same big bag of crooks, but that's not yeah. necessarily the case. So I think that that was a r he, he, he didn't engage his, uh, I think, his masterful thinking on that area very well. So I'd like to say that about that. Now the question is, what can we do about it, if anything? That's the only question I have with that on Article 8. The, 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 your, your point <coughs> is, is you don't wish to um, take another vote on our recommendation. There's nothing um, that we can do with, it, do with that. It's with the voters um, mm -hmm. at this point. Yep. And whether or not um, Dave Lang's changes to the budget um, have any impact depends on how the voters react to the operating budget. So. That's true. Just, just the board knows that bill was paid on uh, January 10th. We received it on November 4th. <coughs> um, as we do every year, we do not pay it in the preceding year. Uh, we pay it when the new year opens. Mm -hmm. So that bill has been paid through. So our dues are paid through 2014. Yes, sir. That's okay. correct. And then the money. It is. The, the, they are also all these sums that were cut are also in the default budget. So mm -hmm. right. Now the next question, following up on that, Fred, is. Well, uh, it is in the default budget. Yes, whereas it is. it's it's that not. <coughs> in the default budget. That right. is 2014 money. That's correct. Thank you. That is correct, sir. Well, that answers my question completely. Mary Louise, did you have something? I'm sitting here asking people to come to the deliberative session, which is their opportunity to make <laughs> motions like that. <laughs> And I'm not going to question anybody's motives for what they're doing. And certainly if there's anyone in this community and in this state who has a right to make a motion regarding that outfit, it's, it's Mr. Lang who's been fighting for this for the last 11 years. Uh, so I, I think it's rather counterproductive to tell people not to come and make motions <laughs> that we don't <laughs> like. I mean, come and make the motion. That's the opportunity. It's not a question of liking or disliking. <coughs> that is cutting off your nose despite your face. Well, that is shooting yourself in the foot for the town. That's your perception. No, that's a fact. That has nothing to do with my opinion. Yeah. Ask anybody else here at the board besides yourself. You, who do you go to when you have a legal question problem? The first person you always run to, since I've known you in 2004, you run to the LGC. 
or the what we call a southern entity. As, as chairman of the budget committee, I used to ask. No, yeah. that's legal opinions, but that's not to say you can't get legal opinions elsewhere. Where are you going to get it now if you don't have? The they've had and still owing us money from 2003, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That's a different entity. No. Now who are you going to go to they for started. help now if you don't belong to it? They started it. Who are you um, going to go to to get help if Mr. they're chairman, not there? Can, can no. I can I comment and then can we move on? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think first of all, there's two issues that have been <coughs> thrown around here. One is should people have the right to to make motions like this at deliberative session, whether you like them or not. Obviously, yeah. people should yeah. yes. have the right well, to do that. Yes. Um, having having said that, um, I agree with Mike's point about the NHMA. They are a separate legal entity from the LGC as it's structured today. There is a legal entity called the LGC Health Trust. There is a legal entity, the L LGC PLT, Property Liability Not Trust. Not and true. there is they a... Merged. Can, can I continue without interruption, please? Okay. And there is a third entity known as the New Hampshire Municipal Association, which is a completely separate entity. Okay. I had a discussion this afternoon at 5 o'clock, quarter after 5, with Judy Silver. Judy is the executive director of the NHMA, which confirmed my understanding of that. The NHMA is essentially nine people. Some of the people that I have worked with, for example, Cordell Johnson on the pollution control exemption, Barbara Reed on things to do with the pension plan and, and, and our efforts to repeal spiking have been extremely helpful besides being available for legal advice. Um, it's, it's a resource where in areas of, that are, are gray legally, whatever, our town attorney, Mac Gerald, will often um, consult with the two attorneys up at the HMA or with two of, of the nine people or whatever to bounce things off of them or get their opinion at no cost as opposed to going out to outside counsel at 175 or $200 or whatever. They're essentially the lobbyists for the municipalities looking out in the legislature for the interests of the municipalities and to some extent, although I don't think it completely balances, balances other lobbyists who are looking out whether it's, it's business interests, union interests or whatever, which at times are not necessarily consistent with the, with, with the interests of the municipalities. So to take and, and, and throw the, the NHMA <coughs> in with the LGC, I don't agree with, um, but I guess we can agree to disagree. Moving on. Um, are there any articles in this list that have changed that anybody wishes to propose that the board rethink its its um, vote as far as recommendations? Does anybody know if the budget committee changed recommendations? They were meeting when I left. I have no idea. Okay. We've not received notice if they have. Okay. They made quite a few changes to the ordinance on the solid waste. I'll have to, I'll have to read through this sometime and see what they've changed, but. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I don't get, think I'm going to change my vote on that anyway, a recommendation. But yeah. the other. So, so no did, one is. Did you want to discuss the noise ordinance at all? Um. I wanted to see what the changes actually. Yeah, I, I can. I, I can give you what 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 my comments are, but I, I don't think we should really visit this in detail until such time as it passes or it doesn't. But I, I will give you the. The comments I will give you. There are two changes to mm -hmm. that. Unfortunately, um, I was probably the main proponent, wasn't there because of having a bumped head that bled and having to go home <laughs> for an hour or so. But essentially, there are two changes. One of those changes um, pushed out the time frame mm -hmm. that, that outside entertainment um, can continue, and it became 11.59 mm -hmm. in terms of 11 <coughs> o'clock. That's what deliberative session. Um, you know, agreed to. It's an improvement over the one o'clock yep. today. So that's the way it is. So be it. And you know, whatever. Um, the other change is a little bit more complicated, and I, I think this is something that um, the the PD is going to have to look at at the time that it passes. Is it actually reduced the dB level yeah. from 65 dB to 50, 50 dB yeah. between the hours of 11 and midnight? Okay. I think that. The issue there is, is, is that it's reduced it to a level that I suspect is, is probably clearly below the ambient noise level most of the time. Now, the, the, the ambient noise level is not 
always the same on Ocean Boulevard, sure. depending on whether you're talking a, a, you know, a rainy night in September or whether you're talking a, you know, a nice night in July or whatever. But I, I think that the reality is, is for the most part, I don't think anybody's going to get any violations for being at 52 or 55 or 57 dB. Um, because it, that is not going to be audible. The definition of audible is essentially something you can pick up on that's above the ambient noise level. And so I, I think just as a practical matter, while, while it lowered it to 50 dB, um, I don't think from an enforcement standpoint it really changed things um, that much. The lowering of the decibel level was from 11 p.m. to 1 p.m. 1 right, I understand. Yeah, I understand that. It's, it's midnight. What oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it, it was the outside entertainment right. went from 11 yeah. to 11.59 or whatever. Yeah. It was 11, 11 to 1 to instead right. of being 65 yeah. dB is 50. But like I said, I yeah. think, you know, obviously it's for the PDB to figure it out, and I'm sure not. they're not going to put an effort into that until whether or not it mm -hmm. passes, and then right. it doesn't become a practical issue right. until probably Memorial Day or I whatever. I think if you can hear the noise, it's going to be above um, PDB. Anything else on the, um, the, the no. uh, more, so we don't wish to take a revote on any, that's fine. I'm also um, going to call them. I'll make one other <coughs> comment. Um, I, I took another pass, or actually an updated pass, based on what came out of the deliberative session um, on the forecast of what's going to happen with the municipal tax rate. And the main thing that's different than what I've forecast in the past has to do with the petitioned warrant articles. Uh -huh. um, you remember a slew yeah. of those mm -hmm. came in. And um, if everything that's on the warrant passed from the operating budget to every one of the warrant articles, mm -hmm. selectman sponsored or petitioned or whatever, the tax rate, municipal portion of the tax rate would rise from $7.04 to $7.93, which would be a 12.6% increase. What was interesting is the sum of all the petitioned Warren articles has a 275, if all of them were to pass, not that they necessarily will, um, is $275,000 impact um, in 2014. I don't ever remember any, not that I ever calculated that amount a lot in the past, but I don't ever remember anything like that in terms of that kind of financial impact fr from a host of petitions warrant articles. But you're not counting the non-impact articles like the forfeiture fund and the... No, 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 no. I know, trust me, okay. I know. And, and you're factoring in the whole dollar value of the dam, decommissioning the dam right, and, exactly. and the e culvert, e exactly. but they're going to be no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not factoring in the whole amount of the culvert okay. because the culvert, the way they are articles worded, the maximum tax impact is 87500 <coughs> right. So my calculation right. factored in 87500 The vehicles, of course, we don't know the trade-in value. Right. 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 Um, one other question I have, so anyway, that's just some information, but 275000 I wasn't surprised with all the ones mm -hmm. that came in the last day, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, 50000 here, 50000 there. And Arthur uh, says that the, the uh, Budget Committee voted to ch uh, change their vote on recommending the uh, promise, whatever that was. What? The, what do you, whatever the family promise. Oh, right. the one that went from 7000 um, to 2500 yeah. One other question I have on deliberative session is, and, and it goes to the, the DPW vehicle purchase article mm -hmm. with the, you know, the yes. front end loader and the backhoe and the sweeper. We had had a plan to, to, to go out to bid, to have the results of those bids come back, yeah. and right. then at deliberative session, right. change right. the amount of that article to reflect right. the bid. Be quite honest with you, it didn't cross my mind all over the weekend. I would have asked a little bit of session if I thought about it. Whatever happened to that? You want the gory story or the whole thing, or you want just the <laughs> end result? <laughs> it didn't uh, happen. <laughs> well, it did happen. The, the bids went out. Yeah. And unfortunately, the bids were structured wrong. Oh, they were? They were. And, and well. we got calls from, uh, we sent out to a whole flock of bidders, yes, right. obviously. obviously. Uh, people who do that kind of work and have that type of equipment. And they said, based upon the bids that you've given us, we can't we can't bid. What was the matter with the structure? The the structure was uh, done in such a way as, and and I'm assuming they just I don't know this because they didn't do the bid. Uh, they picked up a copy of a bid from someone else, and oh. the copy of the bid from someone else was incomplete, yeah. and nobody recognized it. So it left a whole series of things out of the bidding process. When did the bid go out? They didn't send the bid out until a week before deliberative session. Well, no, how long did the, I used to allow for the ship? I looked on the website when I thought of that yeah. over the weekend, <coughs> and, and the, the, the bid was due 
Thursday, this past Thursday That's correct. at 3 o'clock, which mm -hmm. in itself is fine or whatever. One thing that bothered me is the date that the bid was posted to the website was only Tuesday of last week. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, so the bid didn't go out until Tuesday, and we thought yeah, we were going to Monday night, uh, and we thought we were going to get responses <coughs> back on Thursday. I didn't think we were going to get responses back on Thursday. I, I don't well, get we it. Did. Uh, we did get responses but back. But how, how does that happen? It, it's it, it almost sounds to me like nobody told Mike Gingris that this he was the one that handled it. This this was time sensitive. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure he was told. I'm sure he was told. So we're not they there. left two days basically for the bid to be received. Yeah. Uh, we found the error in the bid almost immediately because on Wednesday we had a call. But, but even beyond the error in the bid, I they mean. They redid the bid. Yeah. They sent out Wednesday again with addendums, and it was, we did get bids on Thursday. But, but even aside Thursday. from the error, you can't put a bid out like that, especially the trade ins. This no. isn't like somebody no, right. just going to a price list. Right. They, they, I would think anybody that's providing training is one of you. Come out here and look at, have to look at them. the, the yeah. piece of equipment. Oh, yeah, so right. we, 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 that was people. doomed to failure without any errors. That's correct. My opinion, you're correct. So okay. what, what would you normally allow for something like that? I would normally allow two or three two weeks. And a half weeks. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Okay. At the yeah. very minimum. Yeah. In other words, it fell through the cracks. Looks that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything you're else? Have to rebid it. Yeah. Right. L yeah. And, and I, I guess it's just just hope that that the bids we get are not yeah. substantially more than the amount that's in the warrant article. Well, yes. there's already a price that was given from the uh, sweeper um, uh, vendor. Yeah, trade in value. Trade in value. Yeah. And the wording of the article accommodates what value can be derived. Right. Yes. At least we're safe there. Okay. But yeah. it can't change the maximum so money so in the warrant article. 385 is No, is we don't need to change the warrant article. Okay. Yeah. Um, if we can move off. Oh. It's okay to move off. Deliberative session. Yes. Next mm -hmm. item on the new yeah. business is approval of stop signs. Fred. I will so move. I'll second that. Fred, anything you'd like to say on this? Or it looks pretty straightforward. It, it is. I actually went out and I looked at them all myself because mm -hmm. I found the, uh, the list confusing. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I looked through it, yeah. and and I actually took the car, went out, and looked at them all, and and uh, yeah. these are not on the list. These right. all need to be added to be legal. Good. So every one of these is an existing stop sign. Yes, it's sure, just a matter correct. of cleaning up administrative yes. stuff. That's correct. Okay, Mary Louise, you moved. Did just we get a second? Mike seconded. A Mike Pierce. All in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Okay. Don't forget my ducks. <laughs> okay. Don't forget your ducks. Parade and public Everybody. gathering license, New Balance reached the, New Balance reached the beach. Um, based on some of the discussions we've had on road races, I removed this off the consent agenda and put it under new <laughs> business just to assure that there was some discussion. We had the information um, in our packet. Um, I believe this race essentially comes down. This is the one that starts up, I think, in Mount Washington Valley or whatever. It's kind of like a relay yep. team or whatever. I believe it comes down Mill Road from Northampton, hits Winnicunnet, Winnicunnet down to um, Ocean Boulevard, and then Ocean Boulevard to the State um, Park. I'm not aware of, of any complaints in the past. And one of the things on this particular one, I know from seeing it myself a number of times, because of where it starts or whatever, it, 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 it people are spread out. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's yeah. kind of like if I'm pulling out of my house, you know, onto Ocean Boulevard or whatever. It's it's not like you've got hundreds of people. Got you, you've got one, and then you've got a break, and then you've got another one, and, yeah, and whatever. Right. So right. any anybody, I, I would make a motion to uh, to approve the parade and public gathering license for the um, New Balance Reach the Beach Relay. I'll second that. Any um, further discussion or? All in favor? I'm going to abstain. Uh, vote is 401 with um, Woolsey abstaining. Okay. Are and you, are you going to cover similar the item is is the permit for the use of town property um, by the, the Reach the Beach Relay people September 13th. It's it's after the uh, the, the the close of, of you know most of the use of the lot. Diana after has the signed. Festival. Hmm? After the seafood festival. Se seafood right. festival is typically the yeah, sixth. Yeah, because Labor Day is the first of right. September, so yes. it probably is. Um, Diana, to be honest with you, um, Diana has signed off on this, so yes, I, I, I presume if she has signed off, it's not impacting our, you know, parking revenues, sir. Are, no. they, are they paying for the use? I would is suspect not. I don't think they have. We, we don't. Yeah. Not after Labor Day. Okay. Um, I would make a motion to approve the use of town property by the Reach Beach Relay. 
Second? I'll, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? 5-0. Unanimous. Okay. Consent agenda. Um, before we start the consent agenda, um, I would like to remove the investment policy for fiscal year 2014, mm -hmm. and I have several reasons for wanting to do that, um, one of which is simply because as an oversight it was not included in our packet. I, I sent an email to Christina over the weekend, asked her to get it out via email um, today, but probably the greatest reason is, is people haven't had a, a chance, just because I did, people have not had a chance to, mm -hmm. to look that over or whatever. <coughs> it would be my suggestion <coughs> that we defer this to the meeting in February where Mike Swotzer is in anyway um, yep. to do the um, monthly financial report. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll just make a, a, a comment of one issue. I, I did interact with, with Mike by email today, and I'll just bring the board up to speed on, on some of that interact and interaction. I, I, to be honest with you, some other things popped into my mind that I, I didn't bring to Mike, but uh, Fred can pass those. So I don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. First thing is, is that um, if you look at the December revenue report, you'll see a number of, of minus 34,000 mm -hmm. um, for interest income. And what that essentially is, is that is the net of the income, which is very, very low, okay, um, on, you know, this combination of funds and whatever, and um, service charges, whatever. Oh. And actually that $34,000 number does not reflect the last two months of the year. They've not been posted yet. They will be or whatever. Um, that number, I think Mike indicated, is, is going to rise to closer to um, 42,000. Right. If you look back in history, I don't know if I brought that in or not, but basically what we've seen is we've, going back to 2007, we've seen a steady climb in the negative numbers. Each year it, it, it gets a little bit higher. This, is the, this year is the higher it's been, highest it's been. If, if you go back to 2007, which was pre 2008 financial crisis, that was actually a positive $133,000 number. Yeah. So herein lies my concern in relation to the investment policy. If you look at the policy, it states primary objectives in order of priority shall be safety, liquidity, and yield. Okay, right. And I, I think it makes all the sense in the world to have safety number one and liquidity number two mm -hmm. followed by yield. I, I think that something's missing, and if you could carry this back to Mike, Fred, I didn't think of this today. Okay. I think that we've also got to take into consideration service charges in this oh, yes. because yeah. service yeah. Yeah. in the policy, I, I suspect we take consideration in terms of what we actually do, right. but it's not covered in the policy. I think this is a lot of history. If you go back historically and you were caver carrying an average balance of two million, three million, four million dollars, okay, you're, you're, you're taking in you know, whatever, $25 million twice a year with right. total appropriations. You've got, at times, some very high values. If you were getting 3 or 4 or 5 percent on that, then your service charges were almost inconsequential right. in relation to what you're bringing in. Now we've got $42,000 in service charges and a couple of thousand um, in, in income. Yeah. The um, interest is 0 .001 right. right. cents. <laughs> when I say it's a couple of thousand, it literally I'm a good is day. a couple of thousand. Yeah. So, at any rate, I think this requires some discussion. I'm just advocating that service charges, because of what's happened with interest and whatever, be part of that. So, um, at any rate, moving on to the consent agenda, with that removed, and if, if you could just touch base with Mike, pass that on, and whatever, um, and, and get it on the whatever agenda he's here. We have a lease agreement for the Church Street parking lot, which we received a copy of by email from the town attorney a week ago. It's all been discussed. We have second item, a raffle permit for the Sacred Heart right. School. And the third item is a solicitation permit, the Girl Scout, Girl Scouts Troop, troop 22-23-42 at the Seacoast United Soccer Club on February 8th and 9th. I would make a motion to approve items 2, 3, and 4 on the consent agenda. I'll second. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Unanimous. Any closing comments? Uh, just one thing, Mr. Chairman, and that is that uh, we're preparing the uh, warrant for printing, and uh, we've consolidated it so that it'll print with the shortest period of time. So we need to have the signature pages re-signed so that we can get the thing in the shortest number of pages. And, and we had to do a lot of manipulation. To we we have the changes here. You do. We okay. haven't changed anything in the warrant. They told us not to change the warrant. Oh. 
What? You, you've got, you're going to change it based on what we was reflected at deliberative to session. The what That's about the what changes at deliberative session? Well, we were told not to change it for deliberative session changes. Wait, wait a minute. I'm, 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 I'm confused. Who said that? that we, we called the town clerk's office, and, and uh, I don't know who she talked to, but we were told not to make those changes in the warrant. Well, so, I, I don't agree with that. But well, what, why? I have no idea. I think those changes should be made, and the items well, that were taken would out we should not, be what removed. Was, why would we not change them? We've I always changed them. Yeah, we've always well, changed why them. have a deliberative session if you're not going to change them? Right. Just I think it gets changed. <laughs> Let me. I'm not, signing, I'm not signing anything until I understand we, what's going we on. Haven't, we haven't. We haven't even finished the warrant. We just barely started it. So uh, those changes have to be made, in my opinion, to the entire warrant because those things have to be made. Well, well, the town clerk has been told by somebody not to change. We asked if she could tell us whether or not we should be changing the items in the warrant. My understanding was that word came back that we should not be changing the items. Word anymore. from who? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't well, we can't I can't act on that. that. Gentlemen, I mean, you, it was always my posture as chairman of the Municipal Budget Committee when I sought any type of advice to demand it in writing. Yep. And we would like we from the town done. clerk, I, I well, we, I think we should request from the I, town I, clerk. I don't think we no, should be signing this writing. with this. We need to be going to the Department of Revenue to find out. Okay. Right. I, I don't think we should be signing this tonight with this as an open. Oh. Well, I think, I think the board should signed. get some feedback yeah. tomorrow via email with the town attorney's involvement in this, and we go from there. And we should be talking to the Revenue Department. Yeah. Right. Right. But I think Somebody. we've got to get the town attorney involved tomorrow. Yeah. We want to know who in Concord, assuming it was uh, someone who in Concord, said who's, that. I don't know. Who's we're, we're, missing, we're missing a piece here. We're missing here. something. Yeah. We're missing yeah. a piece right. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Yeah, I'll do that. I will so move at 8.47. I will second, but before we adjourn, I would like to just reiterate to Fred that something go up to the board tomorrow. It will. By email yep. on this change, yep. issue a change in the warrant right. by the end of the day tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It'll be earlier than that. Okay. We appreciate Great. That. Okay. All in favor of adjourning? Unanimous.